Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Today number four of our road trip. My dad and I, we are crossing the state line into Mississippi where I was born in Tupelo, which later in the day we're gonna go by there. But also you have a lot of memories here. Yeah, I was born in Aberdeen. We're gonna go by Aberdeen here shortly and uh, see a few things there. I noticed the sign says, birthplace of America's music. You would think it would say, birthplace of Adam the Woo. <laughs> and you were born here too. Well, that's true. We were both born here. That's true. So we have a, well, I was gonna say we have a kinship because we are we are <laughs> father and son. You know what I mean? I'm inviting you to join. We're gonna go through Verona. So we're gonna go Aberdeen, Verona, and Tupelo. Yep. I'm inviting you to join me and my dad. Shall you? Okay, this is the old bridge that came into Aberdeen on the US Highway 45, used to be the main road of Aberdeen, Main Street. That's the old bridge. Of course, the roadway is gone because they built this new Tennessee Tom Bigby waterway through here. There's a lock and dam yonder. That's a railroad trestle there, the big, big bridge frame. That tributary looking place over there coming in under the bridge, that's the old Tom Bigby River. So did you ever drive across that bridge? When oh, was... hundreds of times, yep, yep. Going from here to Amory or here to Columbus. That was the main highway in those days. Now we're sitting on the new highway, the new Highway 45 bridge. Found the highway, drove up here. It's all fenced off, kind of peeking through the fence. Dad was just mentioning that you can see the little bend in the top portion on the far end of the bridge. Him and my grandpa drove by here and they saw the accident of the RV. Mobile home. Mobile home smashed in the top of that thing. It was too tall, yeah, it smashed in the top of the bridge. And you could see it all bent there. That has to bring back some memories. <laughs> it was a sight to behold. The road's a little bumpy, but it is still accessible, at least till the other end of the bridge where they've cut the road off. This is 45, you said, old 45? Old US Highway 45, yep. Going into the Aberdeen. Well, my grandpa had a friend that owned this service station with the gas pumps. Gas pumps are over here. He were saying you first learned how to put peanuts in a Coca-Cola bottle in here. Yeah, my daddy taught me how to put peanuts in a Coca-Cola bottle. A six ounce bottle of Coke and costs five cents and a five cent bag of peanuts. I've done that. I mentioned that in some of my road trip videos. I learned that from you, and this is where you learned it from I your dad. From my daddy. There used to be a shelf on the length of this window. On the other side? On the other side, inside. And my daddy would pick me up and set me up on that shelf, and my legs would hang down. I'd sit there <laughs> yeah. with my legs hanging down, drinking my Coke and my peanuts. <laughs> He'd be talking to his buddy. Now, the tracks don't run through town anymore, right? Well, they partially do, but the, the train doesn't go through town anymore. Correct, yeah. The, Railroad ran right up this right up the road here. I rode this train, it was a passenger train from here to St. Louis, Missouri. At that depot. From out of this depot, yep. Back when I was in I don't know, maybe I was nine years old, eight years old. You can see this is where the tracks end, right here. Yep. That's it. Still a, still a few little remnants left. Oh yeah. Okay, this uh, building you're looking at now, and the next building next to it, was all part of a manufacturing, a clothing manufacturing uh, establishment back in the day when my mother and my grandmother both worked here. Uh, in the, uh, they were both seamstresses in the production department, making pants and shirts and various sundry clothings. That was a big deal back in those days. Buxton's Jewelry and Music. That's where I bought my first guitar. Okay, you're looking at a bank in this facility here on the corner of uh, Meridian Street and uh, whatever this other street is, Jefferson or whatever it is. 
Uh, this used to be the Coca-Cola Bottling Company for Aberdeen. It was owned by Mr. and Mrs. Clark. They owned the franchise for the bottling company back in the day, back in the 1950s and 60s. And uh, my daddy worked here for 22 years, retired from the Coca-Cola Company. I got to work here one summer after my freshman year of college, uh, delivering one of the, uh, driving one of the delivery trucks for the route in the area. Fond memories of Coca-Cola. You said Jefferson, right? It's w Washington Street. Yes, I, could, well, I, could, I couldn't read it. I, I could see old. better from here. Meridian and, and Washington. Meridian and Washington. And the grocery store that you worked at was over on that little section of downtown. Over on Meridian Street. Yeah, I think it's uh, under that sign that says Jin Jin Chinese food. That's it. Yeah, okay, let's drive over there. and. But yeah. before we pull out there, though, looky over here at this building. Okay, that building with the bricky looking front and the glass windows and everything, that used to be a pharmacy for a medical clinic which was adjacent to it, which is not there anymore. Dr. Murphy's uh, Medical Clinic, that's where I was born. You were born right in here? Not in the, not in that building, but in the adjacent medical clinic oh, that's, next to it. That's now an empty an lot? Empty parking lot now, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, 1949, right there in that empty lot years ago. where they're now doing some weed eating. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That is cool. That's where I was born. No kidding. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. C.L. White and Mr. Ed White and Mr. Leonard Hussey used to own a grocery store here that I worked at. And I think it encompassed all of this that you see covered by the awning there. Uh, they ran a grocery store. Oh, so starting at this awning. Right over here, yeah. The, the hair visions. Exactly. All the way down. And then um, Mr. Hussey ran a, also ran a cotton business out of this part out of, of here. here. So the grocery store were these two right. spots. Right. Was that one of your first jobs? That was probably the first job I ever really had, yeah. You're yeah. bagging groceries and stocking shelves. and. Yeah, did, did the whole schmear. Yeah. Now, I, rec I recall years ago when I was very young, you took me by here and I met Mr. Hussey. I think you probably did, yeah. He was an older gentleman. Yeah. And I was very, very young. So Everybody I, was old I recall going in here as well. So this, this kind of rings a bell for me as well. Yeah. Zip. Now adjacent to Buxton's jewelry is also Buxton's music. What significance does this have? Well, it used to all be together. It was all one place? And that was the original store there. He seems to have expanded. Apparently they did. This is where they used you used to just have a wall in the jewelry store with some guitars and some music books and things. And that would have been the store I would have been in. I couldn't hardly tell you how many times I just went into that store and drooled over the guitars. Some window shopping. Exactly. Probably the same signage up top here. They probably think you're casing the joint. Probably do. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Mr. Buxton owned the jewelry store. Well, he still did, but he died at nine and a half. Nine and a half. Nine. Wow. In 2019, he passed away in October. And all the guitars moved in the door. I saw that. I'm going to walk over there in a second. You remember where about it was, Dad? Right along here against this? That was it. First guitar. Why'd you buy why'd you buy a guitar? What, what influenced you? Back in 1963, the Beatles released their first popular music in the States called I Wanna Hold Your Hand. And that was the beginning of my Beatlemania craze. And you wanted to play the guitar and sing? I wanted to learn to play the guitar. See, everybody in high school, every boy in high school. Fancied himself a singer. I wanted to one up everybody. <laughs> I wanted to learn to play a guitar. And you did learn. You learned it. Already knew I could sing. So. Yeah, you got it. That's neat. So this is where, this is where the the magic happened. Well, began. This well, was the place. Right over there, along the there. there. I'd come in and I'd say, Mr. Buxton, can I just strum on one of your guitars for a few minutes? Wow. Yeah, sure you say. And eventually you bought one, saved up and got one. 
he, he died at 99, the lady was telling me. Goodness. On the far end there? Far left, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Buxton. This is here. Oh, you know what? There you go. There. So that's over on the side. You can still see when the guitars were still there on the top of the shelf. That's right. They were located up top. That's right. Right up on the little ledge right up there. Wow. Yeah. That is cool. Big Star Groceries was one of the two major shopping uh, grocery stores here in town. And my mama made them both every, every week. And I'd come up here with Mama Grill grocery shopping. She won a bag of groceries in there one time. It was a thrill. She was so excited to get a free bag of groceries. Doesn't look like it's open anymore. Big I don't Star. think it's open anymore. I don't remember what any of those other stores were either. Drove about a block or so from this point. No vehicles. The road here has seen better days. And the Aberdeen water tower is obscured by this tree. This is the old city swimming pool. Right up here. It's not used anymore, right? It's abandoned? It is abandoned, yep. But it was a hot spot back in the day. The city pool. Looks like they've got it filled in. Oh, they filled it in. They sure did. So when you were swimming here, you could look right up and see the water tower with the town name on it. Shallow water. The distinction of the, the two differences was a fence. It was fenced off. Right down the middle there? Yeah. This way. So I'd be walking where the pool used to be. I'd be in the water. This is all fenced off here. You had to be an adult, or you had to be accompanied by an adult to come into this section. Over well, there's there. the lifeguard stand right there. In the pool, it started, I'm guessing, maybe three feet, four feet, all the way down to the deep end. A diving board down there and stuff. But down here, really wide, long steps down into the water on both sides. And my dad would hold me in one arm. Now, I don't know if he was walking and just doing this with his other arm or if he was actually swimming with one arm. Right. But he would go to the other side. From stairs to stairs? And then swim back. What year would that have been, approximately? Mid-50s, early 50s. 1950s? So, 50, 65 years ago. 65 years ago, you're standing in the same spot. Periodically, the water tower, for some reason... Ooh, I almost, almost slipped. I almost just slipped right there in the mud. Don't... It gets slick. There's no lifeguard. Would the, would the water tower freeze? No, 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 no. The water tower would overflow. Oh. And the kids would run under the water tower while the water would be falling off. Now the interesting thing is, you follow Oklahoma, which was another hometown of mine. They had one of these. I never realized there was one in Aberdeen. Give me a shove. Hold on. I don't want to push you too fast. Get too dizzy. This is so cool. <laughs> Have you had enough? One more time around. One more time around. <laughs> yes. Hi, Mom. Look at me, no hands. Ooh, don't do you scared me. <laughs> All right, let's slow it down. That's good. <laughs> That's original equipment. They don't make them like that anymore. 
built to look like a rocket, that slide. It's an old fire, well, it's not a fire truck, it's the, the piece that you would pull behind a fire wagon. A fire wagon. Got to sit up here and drive the team of horses. Oh, so you wouldn't pull behind the, this is the fire wagon. Yeah. The horses would be connected here. Sure is. Lots changed since those days. It looks like it was some kind of steam operated pump system. The boiler tank here. This little wheelie thing turned, I guess, and pumped the water out. This is the old ice house. I believe that's the old ice house, and they bring out chunks of ice. If you were buying, let's say, a pound of ice, they would take their ice pick and chop off a, a pound of the ice, or two pounds, or five pounds, or whatever you were buying, right off of the huge chunk of ice. Now we're on the other side of the water tower, kind of near the bottom of the hill of the pool. What was in that empty lot? That empty lot is just is where the old sawmill, it had a name, but I don't remember the name. Big old sawmill where they took trees and sawed up the trees into boards of lumber that they would then sell to lumber companies to build houses. My daddy owned his own truck and trailer and would haul logs out of the woods and bring them in and uh, they, he would unload them in, to the sawmill people and they would pay him money to be, the, you know, to be the guy that brought the logs in for the lumber. It was kind of a neat deal. I was just a little kid at the time. I, would, I went to work with him once or twice. My brother went to work with him a couple of times. But that's the sawmill area. You used to have a used to have an artesian well. I love to go down and drink straight out of the ground, water straight out of the ground. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. This is where I used to come to the movies on Friday nights and or Saturdays as a kid. And there's something interesting about the old Elkin Theater that you don't see it now. But back in the day before people stole stuff all the time, <laughs> there used to be two bicycle racks right out front. They took up a parking space. One bicycle rack faced this way, another bicycle rack faced this way. So you'd ride your bicycle up here, you'd park your bicycle in the bicycle rack. And your bicycle was still here when the movie was over. Wow. And you come back out. Now, another thing about bicycle racks. As you got older, you were good if you could walk the length of that top bar of that bicycle oh, rack. Oh, wow. From one end to the other. While it was, while it was moving. To, huh? While it was moving? No, no, no. It was a stationary rack. Oh, the rack. I thought you meant on the bike. Like, no, 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 okay. no. no, no. No, you get off your bike. Okay. And like a tightrope. Okay. And uh, it took me a while to master that. So you did that right here. Walked. Yeah, right here. Walked on the. You could go and come back without having to get off. That would be even better. How many movies do you think you saw inside About here? A thousand million. Okay, this is the first Christian church here in Aberdeen. This is where I grew up. Probably from the, the first Sunday after I was born, I went to church here. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. When I got old enough to go to youth groups, that's where I went, all that stuff. The corner of College Place and Hickory Street. And later in your life, you came back and ministered here for a short while, correct? Not exactly, no. I came back and preached some revival meetings and did uh, some weekend stuff. I was never the preacher here, no. Just like, a, just part-time for certain events. But this is the church that ordained me to go into the ministry. Okay. And uh, for, for most of my life, this was the only part of the facility to the church campus. This Just the this front building. building. And the, ext the extension, I recall your mom and dad, my grandma and grandpa, celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary on the side the over there. Yep, yep. And grandpa was an elder here. He was a deacon here. He was a deacon here. Yeah. Now we did a talk to someone in the office and they said we could wander around. This is where the 50th wedding anniversary of grandma and grandpa, your mom and dad. We had it in this very room, yeah, there was quite a crowd, it was a big deal. I don't remember exactly what the date was. It could have been in the winter time, just don't remember. But it was a big deal. It was funny watching old people feed cake to each other. 
That's right. They That's right. I recall that as well. Well, we're going to get a chance to go into the old sanctuary building. See anybody up there you recognize? I do, actually. Uh, this is, as far back as anyone could remember, the history of all the preachers from back in the oh, wow. uh, okay. 1800s. I remember him. I don't know why I remember him, except I do. I don't remember this gentleman. Anyone hiding there in the dark? I prefer to handle this alone. <laughs> no, Peter Sellers. Oh, the gymnasium. The ah, the old the gymnasium room. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Look at this. So you stood right up here and preached a revival or two behind this podium. And this is where our family sat. This was our pew. The third one. The creaky floors. The floors are the floors have that creaky sound. If you come from a church that uses a projector screen, you may not know what these are. These are called hymn books. This church still uses hymn books. It has the piano and the organ. Yep. There's the piano there, organ over there, stained glass windows. Handheld fans. Wow. See, I grew up in the day when these were common because there was no air conditioning in the building in the 1950s. So this is where you sat, you guys sat right here. We sat right here, mom and daddy, me and Leon, right here. And that was before the, the pews had cushions on them. In fact, I remember when these floors were hardwood floors. And they put the carpet down? My daddy came up here to help do something one night. I came with him. Daddy worked. I didn't. And I remember sliding on the hardwood floor. As you can see, the floor is slanted downward. Yeah. And I would get way in the back back there behind the last pew and slide under the, the hardwood floors. Under the, under the, underneath. Under the pew, sliding, just having a I, big I, You told me the story, but I don't know how it ends. Well, I, I, I ended up dirty, totally dirty. My clothes were just <laughs> totally filthy. Didn't he say, get up off the floor? More than once. Now, this is the communion table. Communion is where they take, where they have the elements for the Lord's Supper, the bread and the grape juice or the wine. And uh, this chair would be for one of the elders, and this chair would be for another elder. And when they got ready to pass out or to administer the uh, emblems to the congregation, one man, one man would pray regarding the bread, and one man would pray regarding the juice. We had people in the church. Where'd you go? I'm right here. Behind <laughs> you. Right here. Over here. We had people in the church. <laughs> Who would work with the youth? Okay. And when I got up around my teenage years, there was a couple in the church, and there probably weren't but about four or five of us teenagers at that time. But this is where we would meet, right here. We would sit on the pew, and the husband and his wife would sit here with their legs hanging up. <laughs> no, they yeah. didn't. Anyway, and that this is where we had our original youth meetings. Wow. And yes, this is the exact podium that they had back in the day. When I was a teenager, they would have youth night. And there would come times when I would get to preach for a youth night. And I distinctly remember one night I was pontificating at my height. And I ran out of things, <laughs> things to say. I ran out of my notes, ran out of things to say, and I just said... Well, that's it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of it. That's the end of the sermon. Oh, gosh. It's all coming back to you now. It is. And I'm thinking to myself, somebody shut that kid up. Long story short, it was me. <laughs> it was you that was doing the yelling. All of a sudden, Wayne, who was sitting on one side of me, elbowed me. 
Leon that was sitting on the other side of me elbowed me from that side, and it was me. You had, you had fallen asleep and you were yelling in your sleep. You were sitting right back here on this back row. Second from the end. I didn't film the story about the you vomiting on the floor. That's fine. I'll probably just leave it a little teaser in so they can wonder what really happened. <laughs> it involved a tuna fish sandwich that didn't agree with you. Didn't agree with my And the pew up here, second from the front. Yeah. Inside the kitchen here. Sure. Drinks are now, drinks have gone up in price. They are now 30 cents. Wow, inflation. The Dr. Pepper logo, it's the old Dr. Pepper logo. Mellow yellow. Wow. All right, on to the next place. Where would the next place be in coordination to where we're at now? Let me think. I think we're going to go out. All right, go to the house next. Go over to the house? I think so. Heading toward my old homestead. When you were born, were you brought to this house? The, my only recollection is this house. We might have lived in uh, the house next to it, which is no longer there, until they built the house that we're going to look so at. So Grandpa had it built. Yes. And then the family moved out. Correct. It's just at the bottom. Bottom of this next this hill. This next hill. The second house here. That's my buddy with the German Shepherd dog. He used to sick the German Shepherd. Oh, dog. right there That's in that it. house. Yep. I learned how to climb trees. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now this is a daycare here, but this used to be my great aunt's house on the left. And at the bottom of the hill is you have that's wow. That's where I grew up. Yeah. That the sh shed in the back with the rusty roof. My dad built that. In fact, my dad built everything you see there. The, he, he used to have built. he used to have his ice machines in that shed. He did had two or three of them. He worked on ice machines. He, made, he was a magician with ice machines. Yeah. Now I visited this house many times. We come here for Christmas, many Christmas mornings, when you Christmas were a young weeks. Boy, you were a young boy. You were pretending to be Superman. I think you had a Superman outfit on. And back in that day, my brother smoked, and you bumped into his cigarette, and you said, "Ooh." Boing by fire. <laughs> because I was because <laughs> I was burned by fire. Boing by fire. Didn't even hurt. Didn't even hurt. Now we do have some photographs of what the house looked like when Grandpa's truck, Coca-Cola truck, or maybe one of his wood delivery trucks, was parked. Okay, okay this is the photo. This is probably uh, mid 1950s. My dad was driving his log truck. Is, and, is uh, that the log truck there? Is that the Coca-Cola truck no, there? No, that's the log truck. Hey, we just talked to one of the neighbors that drove by and asked what we were doing in the road. Showed him matching up the photos, introduced him. My dad talked about my grandpa, my uncle, who sold the house. And they said that at the moment there is no one here and we were, we're allowed to walk around. So we're just gonna walk around and Let me see. just tell you some stories here. My mother loved roses. So she had rose bushes down both sides of this sidewalk in front of the house. We were, and me and my brother and the neighborhood kids were forever playing football. And we were always getting balls and jumping over her rose bushes. Playing in the yard. So we had to reckon with mama many times over her rose bushes. Yep. Now see, I recall being right in here when I would come back to visit for the holidays, playing baseball here, you would be you know, pitching the baseball. I would hit the baseball that way, probably over that. And I mowed this yard a couple times probably did. for Grandpa as well. The shed's still back there where he had his, his ice machines in this the all, backyard. This all used to be dirt, dirt, dirt and gravel until Daddy poured the concrete for the driveway here. And I don't know if you've ever heard me tell the story of your Uncle Leon giving me a fork and telling me to stick the fork into the outlet. Did you do it? This is the outlet. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> wow, I, I'm just amazed the shed is still back there. And the ga area where the garden was in the backyard. Wow. He put the awnings, all of these awnings back here with the shed and everything. Amazing. Yeah, two mimosa trees down here. Over in the side yard? Right here beside the road. I also recall you telling me Grandpa didn't want to sell the property next to him. Well, he bought the property intentionally not to build anything there. So he wouldn't have a neighbor? So nobody would build next to him. And for a long time, when I was a young boy, Daddy would plow up this side yard and for a garden. We did a garden for many times. I can remember when he used to use a plow and a horse to plow up the garden. You mowed the yard. You told me a story. You mowed the yard and you put lettering I did. so that someone that was from a bird's eye perspective could read it. What did you spell out? Beetles. So you did like the beetles. I would lower and raise <laughs> the cutting blade. I came home. I mean, uh, I, I, I was, it, was, it was an art. It was a work of art. And my daddy came home from work and made me mow over the whole. Oh time. man! <laughs> you had the Beatles. You had the guitar. You wanted to be Paul McCartney. Yeah. Or George Harrison. My brother, when he was still living at home, he and I liked to play basketball. So daddy put a big pole in the ground with a backboard and a basketball goal, and it was ten feet until the basketball goal rusted <laughs> and fell off of the backboard. This was, well, later in my day when I came here for vacations, or for Christmas, this was one of the guest rooms, and the TV room was the next, was one, the next one over, where Grandma would watch all her shows, Matlock, In the Heat of the Night, yeah. and a Christmas story, we bought them a VCR for for Christmas Day and a Christmas story on VHS. Yeah. And we all sat in that room. We did. And watched it. We did. Very nice of uh, I remember when they built those houses yonder. Very nice of the neighbors to let us walk around. And those big pine trees were just seedlings. These pine trees were just seedlings? They were just new. They weren't four or five feet tall. Oh, you can get a really good view from over here of the shed. And the kitchen was that small window. That small window there was the kitchen on the far end. Grandma always, she didn't want any of the, the grease splashing up on the side of the wall. So she put up a full-size wall piece of plastic. <laughs> That's right. To keep the grease from splattering. When I was a little boy, long before Daddy ever built that metal shed, the first shed out here was actually a chicken coop. Oh. And Daddy kept all of his tools and truck parts and all that stuff in a chicken coop. Then when that finally dilapidated, it was a wooden structure. That's when he built the metal building. I am really happy that shed is still there. That, that is neat. There used to be a massive oak tree in the backyard picture if you would say between that tire the tire that is a flower bed yeah. and the house a huge massive oak tree maybe a little closer toward us anyway one day it just rotted and fell over thankfully it did not fall on the house yeah it fell long ways like this and took out the clothesline mama had a clothesline four or five lines of clothing and it just wiped the whole thing out. I, of course, as a kid, loved playing in the branches yeah. until they finally came and chopped up the tree and hauled it all off. Ah, uh, lots of memories here. Lots of. Playing football out here, playing baseball out here. Basketball, baseball, football. We did a bunch of it. What would be the next closest spot from here you'd like to go and reminisce out? We're gonna go out this way to, uh, we actually used to have a Walmart. It's okay. not there anymore. Go see the Walmart. There's a place out here where I taught you how to drive. Let's go check that so out. Go check that out. And then the new high school where is you, out here on the highway. Where you graduated. Where I graduated, yeah. Before that was Mama's TV room, that was Granny's room right there. When she was living with us. Yeah, this image here 
looking down here really brings back memories for me. Just the sidewalk going up into the door. It almost looks like it could be the same door from decades ago, that same wooden door. I think that is the same wooden door inside, yep. And the living room where we opened all our Christmas presents and all that were these windows right here. And I would sleep on the pull-out couch in there. And it, sometimes at night, I would peek out the window of the door and look across into this empty field. Just, I would say daydreaming. It was at night, but I wasn't sleeping. I just still have this image of peeking out over here at this empty lot in my youth. Amazing. All right, moving on. Now, before pulling out onto the next road, tell the story about this. There used to be a ditch right here. There used to be a ditch there, an open ditch, and there used to be a row of uh, bushes there along the ditch. That continued farther this way? So the, yeah, so the ditch would have been on the right-hand side of those bushes, between the bushes and the road. That gray house over there, some buddies of mine lived, and I spent the night with them one night, and it snowed probably about eight, nine, ten inches maybe of snow, my mother clearly told me not to come home in the snow, that she would come over in the car and get me later in the morning. I, of course, being the adventurous one, decided to disobey. I was going to, <laughs> to disobey my mom, right, and walk home in the snow. Well, when I got to the edge of the road, you couldn't tell where the edge of the road was because of all the snow. You couldn't tell where the ditch started and stopped because of the snow so I just on a whim jumped into the ditch and I wound up in the middle of the ditch how did how deep was the ditch you think probably three feet maybe three and a half but you were feet. tiny I was yeah so I was you only sunk about down four in the five. snow I was sunk up in the snow muddy as I'll get out when I climbed out and I lost a house shoe that I didn't find until the snow melted needless to say grandma probably not very happy she was not a happy camper and now pulling in the empty parking lot of what was a Walmart not a Walmart Supercenter but a standalone Walmart store this was a little bit later on this wasn't like in the early years of you being here that is correct yeah I was long gone after getting married and leaving home and all that but we would come back for Christmas and we for would. holidays and we did go in this Walmart and some someday at some point we came back and it wasn't a Walmart anymore it was a Wally's something or other. And now the Wally. Now the Wally's is gone. Now it's nothing. Just empty. You don't see too many Walmarts close. No, you don't. It, the Aberdeen Walmart, officially to go on record, closed. And there is no other Walmart here in town. Yeah, they, they moved, the corporation moved the, uh, obviously it wasn't making enough money. So they moved it over to Amory about uh, 16, 18 miles away. And across the street from this, is an old Pizza Hut. You ever had old Pizza Hut place there? Yeah, we ever yeah, eat pizza, I there? pizza there once before. Yeah. And check this out: the Walmart sign, Discount City, is still there. They didn't even take it down when it became Wally's. Walmart, Discount City, and that Pizza Hut we're referring to, right over there. That's the iconic shape of a Pizza Hut. Sure is. There's no disguise in that. We're on Bulldog Avenue. This is the school that school building that I graduated from in 1966. It was a brand new facility then, and we were the first class to graduate from the new facility, and we were so proud of that. Don't know if we're going to be able to get in and look around or not, but uh, just wanted you to see where I graduated from high school, and yes, I did graduate from high school. <laughs> That's the football stadium off to the left. Play any games down there? I did, actually. I played all the home games my senior year of high school. On that field? I was on the football team. Yep, yep. That was our home team's place to play. This is the hangout back in the day when I was a teenager. You'd get in the car and you'd drive into town. You'd turn around and come back and you'd drive around Ernie's Fountain Grill. Go in and get a burger, maybe a banana split, a milkshake or something. And this is where I learned to play bumper pool. Inside there? Inside the Ernie's Fountain Grill. Grill. Bumper pool. It has seen better days. I like the architecture though. Very cool. Very retro. Yeah. Now this whole area has changed, but over in this section was where 
I first learned to drive, quote unquote, learned to drive. You taught me by bringing me out into this area, which was a shopping center adjacent to this field and just showed me how to, you know, take it out of park, drive around, how to turn, speed up, slow down, hit the brakes. One day you're still gonna learn. One day I'm gonna learn how to be a good driver. <laughs> it was right over in this section, right? You know, right, right over in there. You look beyond the burning trees, you see those piles of rock and sand and some other building equipment looks like, and then this warehouse looking thing with the roof line. Yeah. That used to be originally, when I was young, that used to be the drive-in theater. You pull your car up and watch the movies. Pull up, take the speaker off of the thingy. Yeah. And uh, forget to hang it back up when you left. Oh, rip the, rip the side mirror off. Yank everything out. Yeah. Oh, drive-ins, a thing of the past. Some still exist. Oh, just not days. just not one here in Aberdeen. Hey, we're having a change of thoughts here. This was the I strip mall parking was, lot. Yeah, this was the par part of the parking lot. They built this building since then. Yeah. So we, this is the original asphalt and concrete where I learned to drive, not over here. And you can see the other entrance because it circled around and came out on the other highway yeah. on that side over there. So right in here, I would have been taking my first, first drive. <laughs> it wasn't a stick shift. That's true. It was, it was automatic. That's so that's, true. that's, that's true. stick shift would have been a lot more difficult. That would have been fun. This is the first house that we lived in when we took the church to preach at Verona, Mississippi. This house actually had a, an address in Shannon, Mississippi. And your mom and I lived there about three or four months. This was before you were born. And um, we're gonna try to find that house. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to find it though. Things have changed over the last 40, 50 years. Right up around this, where this bridge is kind of. Uh, somewhere between here and the next few miles. So Verona is more or less Tupelo, Mississippi. Yeah, from what I can determine, I think Tupelo probably has incorporated Verona into its Montropolis metropolitan area. After a little searching, I come to the conclusion that that house has been torn down along this road. But where we're heading next, this bill, do you recall this billboard being here? No, this is new to me. You can see the air conditioner unit. Was yeah, right I see you now. Yeah. Hey, you right over here. Thir was that, what number is that? 1301? 1300. It's 1300. Yeah, the whole building. Oh, the whole building's 1300. Yeah, this. Except for that. There's another one over here. At 1306. You can see where the air conditioner unit used to be there. Yeah. The, yeah, 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 right there, right there. Yeah. So this is you, Dad, and that's, who's that in the middle? Uh, that's his wife. I'm trying to remember his name. Mitch and Anita. Mitch and Anita. I can Let me see the photo of the side door. This is where you guys moved after that house we couldn't find. There's mom around the side. That door's still Look there. Look at the side door right there. Yeah. There we go, yeah. See? That's pretty cool, right? That side door right there, see? Number three. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And around the back they had a garden. You had a garden in the back, right, Dad? Got a garden in the back here, yeah. Yeah, my, my corn blew over and I went back out and stood it up. <laughs> and then right there, we're not that even was. No, oh, these, these back here weren't there, no. no. Yeah, you can tell you had to go like that. And the church is just right up there. Yeah, the church right there. We go to church up there. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to walk over there. and you got a, We got a photo of the church uh, The church in the car. Yeah, it's in the car. I was born just up the road in Tupelo. And this your son? Yeah. Yeah. That's what the church still looks like, right? Yeah, well, they go right there. See? Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah, we're gonna drive over there and look at. Oh yeah. So you guys didn't have far to walk home, Dad. He was just right no, here. Right here yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That, when was this picture taken, Dad? When was this picture taken? 1974. 74. That's when I was born. You were born for me. I was born in 74. I'm an old man. I'm, not as, old, I'm not as old as my How dad. Are you I'm 40. I'll be 47 in August. I'm 43. Could be 44. I'm 36. <laughs> Don't take pictures. <laughs> All right, man. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, man, you ought to see my puppy. I got a pretty puppy, man. I don't know what she means. Wish she got pit. Like now, looking at the sign, it is now called the Gateway MB, not Verona. And my first thought was that this was part of that original building. Now, looking at the photo, but looking a little closer, you're saying it's not. This is the front door that was facing the roadway. This is the road right here. Okay. This is Palmetto Road. 
Okay. That's the front door facing the road. Notice the sidewalk coming out from the front door. There's no sidewalk going out. They have the doorway. The front door now is in the corner of the building. Yeah. And this is a side portion here. Now they may have taken this original building and built out from it. And then of course added on this wing. Okay. Which would have been, see this, see this is kind of the beginning of a wing over here, but it's not extended out like that. And on this, off to the side, there was a, a place where you guys would have your fellowship meals. There it is. This is across the street because there were people in the church back in that day who did not believe in eating on the church property. But whenever we had a fellowship meal, we'd go across to that building. You can't see it for the trees now, but that white car is parked there. Oh, up top there. You have to walk all the way over there to eat. Oh yeah, I can see it. There is the structure there with a truck parked in front. And there is the structure now, kind of tucked away behind those trees. Standing where the front would have been, as he described it, has been extended outwardly. And the sign was there, as shown, right? right about in that section. And you took a photograph at the sign right over here and you had your, your leg propped up on it. Yeah. Let's see if I can flip through here and show it. There it is. That was the old sign. The old sign, which was right, yeah, right about in this section here. Here's my dad back in the day. Yeah, this is, uh, this is where I was preaching when you were born. 1974. 1974. We're going to go from here into Tupelo and see if we can locate the hospital where you were actually born. That would be great. And Elvis Presley also born in Tupelo. Maybe we can go by his place as well. We could show where Elvis was born, mm -hmm. where I was born, and earlier we showed where you were born. We did. Three of some of the most important people ever to be born in Mississippi. There you go. And a few miles away, at four or five miles, made it into Tupelo from Verona. The North Mississippi Medical Center. Does the building always look like this or has it been? Actually, the building that you were born in was much smaller. This has been expanded a lot over the years. But that area right there, you see the where the pillows are and see that car coming out? That was where we pulled in to take your mom in. And then I wow. went and found a parking place and uh, that's where you were born. 1974. I sat out in the that's back in the old days where you didn't go back with the mother when she had the baby. So I sat out in the waiting room waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for you to get here. You took your sweet time. That's why it was called the waiting room. I guess it was. <laughs> and anyway, the nurse came out and somebody had told me that, hey, you know, one of the, one of the things they'll do is when you have a baby, they'll give you a like a, a, a plastic bucket full of stuff diapers and all this kind of stuff for newborn babies so this nurse came out and walked by me and went down the hall and came back with the bucket with all this stuff in it and I thought to myself I bet that's for my wife and for me and for my new son of course I didn't know you were going to be a son uh, that was before we people started doing you know knew what the baby was the gender doing. reveals that's what we're trying to do anyway so you were so surprised I was surprised happy we had a son uh, we had already decided, your mom and I had already decided that once I found out you and uh, the, that she and the baby were okay, then I was to just go home because there was no reason for me to stay up there. I was just supposed to go home. So I went home and I wanted to celebrate and not being a drinker of alcohol, I did the next best thing. I bought the largest pizza I could find, pepperoni pizza. And I brought a two or three liter Diet Coke. And I went home and pigged out <laughs> and watched TV. <laughs> that was my celebration. You celebrated. And continued on. Going around. This would be the back door. Now arrived at the birthplace of Elvis Presley. This very small home. 
he was born inside of. Kind of wraps it up. I've been here several times over the years, but I felt it a fitting ending to this episode. And that's going to do it for today. Mississippi Adventure. Covered a lot of ground. We did. Thank we you very much. We <laughs> take the, let's do take two. Let's do take two. We covered a lot of ground. Yes, we did. Just take, take, take three. That's going to do it for today. Mississippi Adventures. We covered a lot of ground. We did. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow. I guess the thank you. Thank you very much again. Bye. Take four. That's going to do it for today. Look, Elvis has a guitar like you purchased, Dad. I believe it is. Kind of like the one. Have he got his at the hardware store in Tupelo? You got yours at the Buster's jewel, jewelry the store. jewelry shop yep. in Aberdeen. We covered a lot of ground. That's going to do it for today. From Mississippi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. <laughs> Take number. What is this? Fourteen. <gasps> That's going to do it for today. We covered a lot of ground on this Mississippi episode, did we not? We did. Thank you very much. You gotta do the thank you, then thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Take number 96. Look, you have a, gu a guitar like this. Kind of from the yeah, Aberdeen the Jewelry I, Store. Mine didn't have any strings on it either. <laughs> we covered a lot of ground today in this Mississippi. That's gonna do it for today. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nailed it. Now. What? That's all. <laughs>